Defending Troy Bond. The thing that saved our lives. The last time. Saved my life. Which one? Uh, wait, wait, what saved your life? The the fucking. Po- so we did the podcast. Yeah, we, yeah. I thought. Okay, and, and I want to make sure. And you were like, so do you want a turkey burger or something? And I was like, no, a veggie burger. First time I've had a veggie burger. And I was like, I guess I'll eat a veggie burger. I guess I'm not. And then we eat the veggie burger, and you're like, so you have anything you're going on? And I was like, we're in a pandemic. I don't fucking. Are we recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm in a fucking pandemic, dude. I have nothing going on. And you were like, oh, okay, so you want to stay? And I was like. Yeah, sure. Maybe like in my mind, like watch a Seinfeld episode or something. And you were like, "All right, great. Open your mouth." Uh, next thing I know, we're fucking doing all sorts of drugs. It starts raining. Ooh, thank God you said drugs. It, it starts. Ra- Why you didn't want me to say that? No, no, no. It could have been any number of things once you said, I opened my mouth. <laughs> and then that's why, that after that could follow a New York Times article. About, <laughs> about me, like all that's my what people. Troy Bond said. Yeah. He would get me a five-minute guest enough. spot at Broadway Comedy Club. And it didn't work. And I didn't get the guest spot. I just got a bunch of guest stuff in my mouth. What, I, what we ended up doing, though. Saved my life. Saved your life. That, the, wait, the, I didn't know about that. But I was going to say is arguably... Uh, even more incriminating New York Times story, but tell me how it saved your life. Because I remember it being a great day, and obviously so do you. If it saved your life, well, I don't know. I feel like I uh, that wh- was when let's that was August of 2020. You had when just, did we do, you, you could, just come back from Connecticut because you were you were quarantining with your parents out in Greenwich. Which, like, by the way, I know you don't like to talk about this. I knew your family had money. I didn't know your family had movie theater in a basement money until we did our show in Stanford. You were like, do you want to watch The Departed? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. And we go downstairs, and I'm counting the pores in Matt Damon's face. Just <laughs> living it. After your parents basically adopted me with the best breakfast I think I've ever had after a comedy show. With like a pile of bacon this high. Uh, uh, we were talking. Your sister was there. Kevin Mezik was there. Not only did we have bacon, we had biscuits, which I remember you were being very the, joey about your the, biscuits. There was the, the biscuits are, are out of this world. Did I, you not have a, a, an egg biscuit? I did have an egg biscuit because you were going to have a brain aneurysm if I didn't have an egg was biscuit. Was it not like the best egg sandwich you've ever had? The whole experience was like stepping into Narnia because like you sometimes you don't realize – like, friends, you never acted like a friend with money, which is great, because there's a lot of friends who, like, I grew up with would say shit to a poor kid that a poor kid has no idea how to respond. Like, hey, have you ever been skiing? No, I haven't been skiing. I use a hefty bag to go sledding down the road. Like, so, but, like, you've always been somebody that, like, you're kind of like Frank from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where you you, you, don't, you don't want people to know, and, like, you'd rather live in squalor. I feel like you squalor I yourself. I love the some- squalor. You know what it is? I'm Henry David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau. That was a jump. He, he did, no, let me explain. <laughs> let me explain. Henry David Thoreau, okay. one of my all-time favorite writers. Uh, I sound like a fucking liberal arts asshole, but I, I went to a liberal arts school, so go fuck yourself. Yeah, you can. So uh, I love Henry David Thoreau. And he did this whole thing, whole thing where he was like, I'm going to write this book called Walden. And he, it's like, I'm going to go and live in the woods for like, I don't know, like forever. And then I'm going to write this book about how I lived in the woods and that I'm a woods guy and I, no one helped me. It was just me. It literally, it was like, it's me, it's the ants, and I survived it, damn it. You know, the whole fucking book. And then like some guy was like, let me do some research on Thoreau in this book he wrote. And you know what he found out? It wasn't the woods. He wasn't roughing it. It was his, like, parents' backyards that had, like, a little wood thing. And he would go to his parents' house for dinner. Then he'd go across the street. You know Emerson, the fucking... Yeah, the, was he the one that killed himself with a shotgun? I don't know if that happened, but I know he fell off his roof once. But I think he survived falling off his roof. But then he saw the medical bill. Then he saw the medical bill. I was like, I gotta kill myself. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That, 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 that was also Emerson and Thoreau were back alive back in the day where you could go to the farmers and be like, yeah, I'll take some cocaine, some LSD. And that was just like, okay, uh, and, and, and here's your fucking medicine. Yeah, you could do that now, but it's just fentanyl. It's fentanyl, it's yeah. Fentanyl. Not the real stuff, yeah, but it could kill you. Yeah, stuff, but it will. Uh, I, I don't know a lot about fentanyl, but I know it makes you have overdoses in the most public of places. 
That is yes. Those mm-hmm. Narcan ads are crazy. What's Narcan ads? That's the stuff that like the, like in Pulp Fiction when she had the oh. heart attack. Like, but like, have you ever seen commercials for those where the, uh, the opioid crisis has gotten so bad? That they have to talk about it like it's 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 just like you would go to the store and and get band aids like they're like here's here's all the things that worked out with me having a Narcan pen I was able to save my neighbor's life thank God because I had my pen in my pocket like that's how bad it's gotten and it's such a new thing too and you know where has it gotten bad or is it fun that we're normalizing doing hard drugs that's the thing that's what I wonder See, like we, view the bright side who who are these fucking losers before the narcotics I say let's get more people hooked up on drugs we're not talking enough about the plus side of <laughs> fentanyl <laughs> no no not the plus side of fentanyl the plus side of having the technology to survive a fentanyl future it's like getting a free respawn <laughs> You could take fall damage <laughs> just to get through a couple of hours. Like, you know, like you're playing a video game. Yeah, Halo. Across the th- yeah. yeah, like you'll jump and you'll take the fall damage just because it'll get you there faster. Basically, that's what Narcan pens are. You could have as much fun as you want on fentanyl with that little extra jab. Granted, you could probably only do it once before your heart explodes. But hey, it's worth the fun. But you Welcome funny, to Connecticut. You know but you know what's fun about that? Uh, like, like, just how, like, uh, if, like, you're fucking up a level and, like, this level's not going well, you kill yourself... Throw it over. It's the first start. After you get one of those fucking fentanyl in the hearts, you're going to get a book deal. Uh, you, you're definitely going to make the, the big speech at Thanksgiving when you're like, what am I? I'm thankful for it. Mm. Saving my life. Save. Like, it's, right. a whole, it's a whole thing. It's a whole journey. It's a whole journey. You get so you, a Hollywood loves a comeback story. If love else. a comeback story. And, and then, like, picture this. Like, like, your girlfriend's trying to break up with you or some shit. Mm. And you're like, you know what? This reminds me of the time I almost died of fentanyl. And then next thing you know, she's fucking sucking your dick. You're a hero all of a sudden. That it, seemed like a jump, but it no. seems like you skipped a few steps there. Wait, could you break that down for you me? You tell the girl, don't break up with me. I, have, I, 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 I used to be a fucking opioid ahead. Right. Had fentanyl. My neighbor had to come over and knock on the door. Knock on the door. Realize I was not <laughs> answering. <laughs> fix my heart. Toppy. And, 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 and in that moment, I realized that uh, you shouldn't break up with me. And she's like, oh, my God. That's the I had no idea. Yeah. You can use that for the rest of your life, honestly. You could use a fentanyl overdose. For Is it fentanyl or fentanyl? Because you're saying fentanyl. <laughs> I think it's like, a, like a, it's a regional accent. <laughs> uh, some, you know, it's tomato, tomato. Fentanyl, fentanyl. Fentanyl. Yeah. The, the, that's the thing. I never really appreciated why you know like the letter why yeah i never it was never it <laughs> it's was a never, vowel it's a consonant it was never reliable to me sometimes you know sometimes why like you're not gonna if some i i wasn't i wouldn't have you on the podcast if like sometimes joey would be here i wouldn't have why on this podcast what sometimes why okay why? So, well guess what i have a schedule and i'm a professional so i'm here all the time and I'd, i'm thinking about dropping the why from my first name and changing it to ie just so i can distance myself from why Dude, if your name was Troy, I would not be friends with you. If my name was Troy? <laughs> with IE? Yeah. The IE, I couldn't talk to you. Friends with Troy, but not Troy. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. Because then I'd be like, is it Troy E? I didn't know you felt so strong about that. Troy E, though, I could get with. What do you, how do you feel about the Y in your name? I love the Y in my name. You're okay with the, Y being not reliable? The y, You're okay with a flaky letter? The Y in my name makes everything because without the why i'm joe are you kidding mm. you're not I a joe i don't know joe you're not a joe i don't know joe People... i know joe's and you senator i know joe i'm no joe you're no joe and i'm definitely not a joseph i didn't did they did your parents put joseph on your birth certificate it's on my certificate I, see that i can't believe i don't think i've ever i, I can't think of you as a joseph you're, too, you're way too laid back as a, a joseph is too formal I feel like Joseph was given to me just so my mom can signal when she's mad at me. Because you can't right. be mad at a Joe. You can't be like, right. Joey, right. can't do it. <laughs> try, try to be Joey, mad. Joey, get over here, you little rascal. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You but no, no, no. Now, really give me a mad, like you're mad at me and say Joseph. Yeah, that's one. Give rough. it to me. I want to hear it. Joseph! You're right. That's... You must bring forth. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a punishment for us, a kraut. You, you went Hitler. Went you went German. Hitler. But you know. Imagine you... Hitler calling up Stalin. That's Joseph! That's our game. Joseph! Joseph! I'm the dictator! This is the plans of the treaty! <laughs> Joseph! He's not gonna be like, Joey! I am going to sign up the treaty of Versailles, Joey! And then we are going to go do laundry on the same day because in Germany we are about the buddy system. 
to make sure you are separating the colors from the whites. <laughs> Joey. Yeah, that wouldn't work. It you wouldn't work, have, like, Joey. No, you think anyone called Stalin Joey? Uh, probably not more than once. <laughs> and it's weird that I feel like it's weird that that Joe. How did how did Russians even get the name Joseph? Joseph is a biblical name. They don't read the Bible in Russia. Oh, they do. Do they? I guess they do. The Greek Orthodox. Did he get rid of? Oh yeah, right. Russians are Greek Orthodox, which makes no sense to me. Russians are Greek Orthodox. What was Stalin's whole thing? He he wanted religion or no religion? What was it? I forget. I, I don't know. I was more of a Lennon McCartney guy myself. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the dumbest. Yeah. That's the the most hacky Russian history joke. I anyone. was going to. Yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was good. We'll, we'll, we'll cut Who that. was Lennon? Um, he was the guy before Stalin? He was one of. Yeah. He's probably a good guy. I ch- wait, was I, he a good guy? I don't know. I like. I kind of gloss. I'll be honest. I've read a lot of. Like Nazi World War Two stuff and a lot of stuff on Japan. Never really read a lot about the Russian stuff because it's so hard to read for me to read World War Two stuff anyway. And like I love watching the docs, like World War Two in color. It's great. It's so much fun to wa- uh, not fun to watch, but it's cool that we have that footage. I never. I know Stalin killed exponentially way more people than Hitler did, or at least was responsible for. But he was cuter death. about it. He was cuter about more tongue I mean, in cheek. I I just I watched you know the most comprehensive I've ever sat down to watch anything about Stalin was that movie Death of Stalin and I, that was like a political parody satire so I can't even like that's like saying yeah I know a lot about the trip to the moon because I watched Spaceballs like space but never seen Spaceballs I got it is that Mel Brooks you who, never saw Spaceballs who is who is who made that Mel Brooks I, I love Mel Brooks you, you that's didn't... crazy. Crazy. I gotta watch it. All right, we'll do it. That, that'll be our next movie sesh. That's insane. Yeah, that would be a fun one. If we finish this in time, we could do Spaceballs. I would love to do that. Speaking of old stuff, I want to get back to the Thoreau thing. I don't think I've ever finished mm. my point. Yeah, Th- I'm sorry. Thoreau, but... long story short, you have to know it's Thoreau. Yeah. He was Wait, going... so connect. How did you start off in the Thoreau thing? You, you said, uh, uh, I, I don't, uh, even though my parents are from Greenwich, Connecticut, or I grew up in right. Greenwich, Connecticut, yeah, that you don't uh, come I off... like to rough it. And Thoreau did this whole thing where he made all these people think he was rough in it and like lived in the woods forever. Right. But in reality, he was like, in the woods for like eight hours a day, but he would have dinner at his parents' house. He would go and smoke weed at Emerson's house. And like, that's not roughing it. That, that, that's choosing to be weird. That's choosing to be weird in a comfortable environment. And that's like me. That's like me. I would love to rough it and have like, um, the smallest, like, like hellhole. Like, look at me. I'm a fucking, I'm in, I'm, I'm in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Right. But, uh, I have a PS5. Uh, uh, I have a, I have the best space heater in, in, out, out in the game. But my mom comes over and gives me Italian cold cuts every day. Right. Like I'm roughing it. But yeah, you're you're not hunting for your own meals. You know? Exactly. I I like the I, I like the imagery of the hunting. But yeah. I, I'm, a, hey, I'm a, the I'm idea a, of roughing it. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, I I think the thing that you said was interesting. There was uh, you choose to be weird. Because what we do is a huge, weird <laughs> it's choice. So weird. It's something I haven't really thought about a lot until, like, the last couple of years. Um, but what we choose to do is very, very weird. And it's it's uh, it's weird that we choose it after thinking about everything else we could have possibly done. And I think to do what we do takes uh, uh you when when you do this you can also do a lot of different things in life you know you could do that you could be a public speaker you could you could be a ceo you could do all these other things and the fact that you choose to do this shows that there's some kind of mental deformity inside of your brain or uh maybe sometimes it's like i, I always think like disney adults are uh people who can afford to heal their inner child and comics are people who can't <laughs> you know and we can't afford therapy either and so we is this fucked up? I was talking to this comedian. Her name's like Amy something. I don't know. So this comedian the other day, and she was ranting to me about how all these comedians are like have a clearly like something a screw loose in their head that there's something wrong with them, and that mm-hmm. like it, it, it goes back to childhood why they feel like they have to do stand up comedy, and. The fucked up thing is, I was a hundred percent agreeing with her, telling her I was like, "Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing, that's the thing." And I had this thought in back of my head, like, every comedian but me. <laughs> and I think that's the mental disorder. That's the yes. mental, the fact yes. that I can like agree, be like, I acknowledge, and be like, <laughs> but this, I, 
I opened up the Stanford show that we did in November saying, I love Joey because Joey's so great to have <laughs> on your team when you do business because he's missing the part of his brain that produces shame. Like, no shame. There's no shame at all. Guilt. I, I have guilt. You have guilt. But no shame. You have guilt. And I do want to tell a funny guilt. I want to actually, I could perfectly break it down to guilt and no shame. <laughs> and I could draw it back to Mob Movie Con. Oh, God. Where, it on me. Uh, we went, we go to Mob Con. And first of all, the fact that that we even <laughs> get to MobCon is so you are so responsible for you know like you were the shoe you I literally sent drove emails. us I sent emails sent emails but like you drove me and Figs and Slater down we, we it was a group effort but you did a lot to get us to MobCon so we could promote Wise Guys then our our thing was we had pie wise guys so you could pay five dollars to throw a it's pie. It's Comic Con for mafia losers. Comic Con for mafia losers, and we have uh, and like it was great. Like the people were fun. I don't even want to say mafia for paisans. It's Comic Con for paisans. Yeah, and like we had a great time. There was a lot of great energy there. Hey, I was there. I'm, I'm calling myself a mafia loser. You were there. Like, and the thing is, one of the big things is we're supposed to do a show there. We're supposed to do a stand up show, and the people who we had, had it in writing. We had it in writing, and. I don't. This may come as a shock to the listener, but the people who were running Mob Movie Con weren't really on top of it when it came to planning things out. I think <laughs> is a fair thing to say, and they kept prolonging our show. Now, kind of like the Third Godfather. Kind of like <laughs> that's a perfect metaphor. Now, I love having Joey on my team, and we you said Joe. Joey. You Joey. just said, you just said no, Joe. No, I said Joey. You, you said Joe. I, no, I wouldn't call you a Joey. Go you back. Are, you're, Roll the tape. you're a baby kangaroo and you're a Joey, and that's why you're a Joey. And I would never slip up and call you Joey. After we just uh, had this Joe. whole Stalin After talk. After we just had this whole Stalin talk. But we're supposed to do this stand up show. They kept pushing it off. I'm, a, I'm like in the cannoli costume, about to go on the floor. <laughs> you, you were. And I was like, costume. I don't know what's going on. I just need you, if you guys can handle this. I'm about to do man on the street interviews. <laughs> and then I come back in the cannoli costume, and Joey's like, all right, in about. 10 minutes we're gonna have to go apologize to the mobcon people and we're not having a show and then in the same breath you went but fuck those guys <laughs> i felt guilty but then not no shame no shame which i think that may have been one of the few times i was on your side with that because we did get they were pulling our dicks like all weekend apparently if you're too successful you'll make enemies even if it's helping benefiting somebody even if it's benefiting somebody, they'll get mad at you. We were the most successful booth because there's so many. But you were, like, right when we got to AC, right in the middle of the thick of it. I didn't go out the first night. You, George. Well, I love casinos. I know. like you I, had, I you, love casinos because casinos is basically all the things I love in life. I, I, I love, I like the idea of malls because they have all those stores and stuff. Right. But the mall doesn't do it for me. And I right. also like the idea of a nightclub, but the nightclub doesn't do it. But mm -hmm. a casino... Is literally a giant mall that has nightclubs all over with, in the middle of it, blackjack, which I fucking love blackjack. I fucking I love it. I, if, it's, if malls across America had blackjack, they would have never been competition for Amazon. No competition for Amazon. Jeff Easy. Bezos would not be building rockets. And so, and also, uh, I'm a sucker for, for just like, I like eye candy. I'm not going to do anything to the eye candy, but I'm a sucker for like just fake boobs just everywhere. And AC that you have. So when you're in a casino. Were, all, wait, were there a lot of fake boobs of, in lot, AC? I didn't even not see at my, Yeah, dude. At, at my Harris, movie con, right? at Harris, everywhere. I mean, at my movie con, yeah. yeah so, so I just <laughs> like, I love casinos because I can play blackjack. I can look at the eye candy. There's bars every there's bars at every corner. There's clubs at every corner. And am I in fucking Yankee Candle right now buying a candle? What? What's happening? Am I in fucking Lush buying a bath bomb right now? What's going on? Are in you, a casino. Am I do, do, am I getting a slice of pizza right now? It's crazy. It does it, it, it it's like it's like the inter, the casino is like an internet in a place. It is it is uh but it's like a really sad place. It's like a very the internet's a sad place. It's a dark Yes, it is. Um I'm not sure which is worse, Twitter or the casino. <laughs> it was weird because, like, I don't know. It was my first time ever in AC. And I'm not, like, standing. I'm not virtue signaling at all by any means because I have no ground to stand on. Um, but, like, there are so many times. Because, like, where we were staying in the hotel, your brother hooked us up. Shout out to your brother, Ant. Hooked us up with a beautiful Tony hotel. Broadway. Tony Broadway, my man. You know us. you can't use his real name on this podcast. Right, right, right. Tony, Tony Broadway. Tony Broadway. Uh, Tony, no disrespect. Tony Broadway hooked us up with a with two great hotel rooms outside of AC. <laughs> and what was what 
did you see on every single billboard as we're driving through AC? Strip club. No, not even that. Like on uh, uh, gambling, gambling, gambling problem. problem hotlines. Like every single. It was billboard. strip clubs and gambling strip problems. Strip clubs, gambling problems, like all over the place. As we're going into this, uh, as we're going into the casino, and like as we're driving through AC, it just. I mean, it was very, very, uh, like the most American capitalist thing that you could be living in, right? Like a, a city built on. Uh, greed and like the worst addiction ever but also I'm there promoting my project that is also part of like this huge thing in capitalism but like it's, it just it was one of those things where like this is why I never take a hard line on anything because we're all hypocrites and uh we all were also having a great time. Like, it's not like there's all this drag and horror about it. There's also a lot of people having a great time out there. Like, we were out on the dance floor. Kevin, Kevin was bottling a, bo a bottle on his head. George Martins, who I've never seen bust a move ever in his he life, was, was grooving. We were all listening to live music. We were drinking. I love Shirtless music. guy. Shirtless guy. <laughs> shirtless. New York Nico. Wait, wait explain shirtless guy, because that was really crazy. We're all sitting outside taking a breath from a party, right? From, I don't remember what, shirtless guy as well. We're sitting outside. Yeah, you explain. We're sitting outside. And after then I'll tell you my favorite casino story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, I just remember, like, this was, like, just emblematic of how crazy. It was, like, one of those moments of, like, oh, my God, we're really in this thing now. Um, but we're all sitting outside after dancing and drinking, whatever. We're taking a breather. We're sitting out at that patio. And then we just see some dude walk by us with no shirt. And he was literally steaming. Like, he was steaming. <laughs> you remember that? he was steaming? And then, like, two minutes later, you see two security guards running behind him, like, looking all over. And then two minutes after that, you see somebody with a shirt looking for presumably shirtless guy <laughs> who was behind the cops. And, yeah. like, we all just, like... You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of... I'm going to get really gross, but it's, it's one of those things that I'll never forget. I remember I took this ginormous crap once. And I took this ginormous crap, and it was a cylinder, Troy. It was a cylinder with a hole down the middle of it. I'm like, mm. how the fuck did I poop a cylinder with, like, a straight hole in the middle? And then for two seconds later, I was like, Ugh, got, got another poop coming. I squeezed it out. It was a long, skinny, 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 long-ass thing. I was like... That's that's the thing that we like. How did I how did I manage to fucking and it and it came right after the way the guy with the shirt came right after and like it was like how did those two things get separated in the in the pooping process? Remember how before we were recording, I was telling you that my audience is mostly women eighteen to thirty four. Thank women you for poop, that great story. Women, women poop. You all, I know you do. Uh, we eat your ass. We yeah, taste look the, right into the camera. We, and tell we, them. we eat your ass. We we we, we taste a little. Don't lump me into this. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the worst thing you could do when you take a hard line on something. The collective. Be like, yep, everybody in this room eats ass. The and collective has two part we, bowel movements. The, the, I, I, the only time I've ever eaten ass was a complete accident. I don't believe that for one complete second. Complete accident. I don't believe that. If there's anybody in the world that I don't has eat ass. ass on the menu, you eat ass first and then appetizers. Don't eat ass. What you're mistaking me for is I'm a butt cheek, cheek muncher. Love giving that a hickey. Well, explain to me this. It's this, like giving this, a hickey on a, on a butt cheek. Okay, right. Okay. Oh, but at least there's no like taste there, right? The butt cheek tastes just like the rest of the skin. I love it. It's, uh, it's probably my favorite thing to do. Don't do it that often because it's a treat that you do on a special occasion. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to leave your bite mark around on too many on too many butt cheeks. You never know when that might come back to get you in a criminal investigation. <laughs> I, I love. I, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. I don't think about shirtless men's butt. I don't know how this, my mind's weird. What, you were thinking about whose butt? Shirtless men's butt. Shirtless and, and men's I was, butt. And there's a steaming ass. Were you looking at it going, "Ooh, there's one I'd like to sink my No, he because he was steaming. Now I'm thinking about steaming shit out of his oh, steaming yeah, ass. Oh yeah, yeah. We really looped that one back around, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, what was your casino stories? I told this to you a thousand times, but I don't think I've ever said this on the record before. I know, so. but I love hearing these stories, man. It so, so you know the story I'm going to tell. I'm in the casino. We just literally were at an event where... Um, all right, let me backtrack. There was this event. It was like... Picture the Oscars. Like, the Oscars. But in a casino... In a, in a ballroom at an Atlantic City casino. The and, Mob Movie Awards. Yeah, the Mob Movie Awards. Hosted by Ice-T. Hosted by Ice-T. And they're giving out these awards that... that don't make any sense. Like they literally that go the people who put MobCon together all voted for. It, it made no sense. It was like we're gonna give the the, the Oscar to the best actor who's a, who's ever in a mafia movie to Robert De Niro. 
Robert De Niro cannot be here today, so this guy was a stand-in for Robert De Niro in a short film that never got made. You know what I mean? Right. When I was standing <laughs> with Robert De Niro, I knew that he would want to win this award one day. And I know how much this award would mean to Bobby. I was standing in for him, so I can say Bobby. It was like one of those things. And for some reason, Tarantino won an award at this thing. And obviously, Tarantino's not there. So the closest thing they could get to Tarantino was Michael Madsen, who is famously uh, uh, one of the guys in... Um, Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs. And um, Johnny Brasco. Johnny Brasco. Did you say Johnny Bravo? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite mob movies, Johnny Bravo. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a wise guy. Do <laughs> <laughs> the monkey with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey pretty you owe me two points on this big, pretty lady. I feel like this is the one Bravo thing I have spot on. You, That's actually really good. I was hey, pretty say, mama. Hey, pretty mama. No, it's pretty mama. Pretty mama. There we go. Here we you go, got, pretty mama. Pretty so mama. here we go, Michael Madsen starring in Johnny Bravo. <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen the Christmas specials? My favorite Christmas I, content I ever. I never gave a shit about Johnny Bravo. Oh, dude, you, I'm I, sorry. I couldn't stand him. Uh, I'm sorry. Are dude. you going to tell me I'm wrong? We're gonna. I'm going to show you the Christmas special once, as soon as we get out of this. I watched the Christmas special. The, with the you. Christmas. It's like, That's a good one. I'd be down for that. The Christmas special. It's like it's one of those things that when I describe the Christmas special of Johnny Bravo to other people, so many twists and turns happen in it that they have to stop and be like, "Are you sure this isn't five, six episodes that you're describing?" I'm like, no, it's all the same episode. It's it's so good. Johnny was just like very creepy to me as a kid, like early on. It was like lose it, not creepy, but like I was looking at him and just being like, "Give it up, man!" Like she's not into you. I hated. I always. And I'm going to sound like good fellows. As far back as I could remember, I really hated cringe <laughs> behavior. Ever since I was a kid, I hated seeing guys who tried too hard to get with a girl. I mean, he's not even being himself here. I'm watching him right now. Why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? Chill out. What you yelling for? Lay back. It's all been done before. I mean, look. And if you could only let it be, you'll see. This guy's not a good fella. Dude. But Johnny Bravo. Sorry, that was a rant. Dude, that speech you just made is insulting to me because you're I thought we were friends. You know that you're friends with who the guy who who fucking advertised himself as the cringe humor guy. I don't know if you're cringe It's cringe. <laughs> <laughs> it's cringe, Jerry. It's cringe. Cringe. Oh, the K Man knows. Out of cringe. By the way, I don't like the K-Man uh, like being used. Like every time Jerry says it, it feels forced. I remember the first episode of you. If you chronicle it, it's like the it's like the second episode of season two, I think. Where he's like, "New season, let's mix it up a little bit." Mm. Jerry's like the K-Man, and it feels forced every single time when and Jerry says it. And the, yeah, and there's one time when George says it, where you can tell before they they film that episode, Jerry was like, "Jason, can you um." call Kramer the K-Man because it's getting weird that I'm the only one calling it. I, I want the audience to know that we all think he's the K-Man. And Jason Alexander's like, you do pay my checks. Okay, fine. And he's like, hey, K-Man. Like, he just doesn't want to do it. Give me your top three Seinfeld episodes. So, the episode George gets fired from the Yankees is number three. I love that episode. The whole... The, you sons of a bitch! <laughs> No yeah. Yankee will ever... You tell that son of a bitch that no Yankee's ever going down to Dallas. Yeah, I... I that episode uh, just That's a good one. makes me go crazy. I'm trying to think about my other two episodes. There's so many that come to mind. I love so many of them. I feel like as an honorable mention, I need to bring up the, the, the No Strings Attached episode because... Yeah, Where Jerry and Elaine are sleeping together? Yeah, the first time, yeah. Yeah. Why do you like... I feel like you've brought that one up a bunch. Because I feel like that episode is the episode where they allow George to be George for the first time. What but, does George do in that episode? I know he's just like bewildered, Oh right? my God. He gives the greatest speech where he's like, You think that you can do the thing that we've been trying to do since time has started? Right. Have sex with no strings attached. You think you can do it? And he's like, Oh, you and Jelaine have it all figured out. And it's the greatest speech. So that's number two. And then number one, there's so many fucking episodes uh, that I love. Like like the basics is like, the like obviously the go-to is the... the Chinese food episode or the episode when George's mom's in the hospital and he keeps going back to see the big booby girl. I love that episode. Well, why is she in the hospital though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
she caught him masturbating and she yes. threw her back out. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I love that episode. I, I think uh, the pants episodes are up there. The, the episode when, when Kramer teaches Jerry Stiller that. Uh, the crease. You, the crease. Yeah, where he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my favorite three, the contest, number one. That's got to be my favorite episode ever, just because in terms of how much it changed. Is that Shaq's favorite episode too? I think it's a lot of people's favorite. Uh, just it changed television. It changed the show. Like it became Seinfeld. Oh, then. I remember my favorite one. Which was? Uh, my favorite one is a tie. There's two that that, that tie for number one. Is that, if that's a cop out, go fuck yourself. No, uh, uh, number one A would be um, I, the Snickers episode when they're in Putty's dealership all day. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, love yeah. that episode. But it was pretty great. But it was pretty great. And then the, the other one that I love so much is... um, Hmm. I lost it. Oh, the episode when uh, George is bad guy. Bad George. Everything I do. I lo- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the bad boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad George is a really good one. I love that episode. Yeah. And then the opposite... Those are my top five. That's I gave you top five. And All right, top I, five. Give me the top five again. So, 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 top five. George quits the Yankees. Great. Um, the the no switch str- str- strings attached. I think that's season two, episode nine, maybe. Uh, the the other three I love is um, is the dealership. Mm-hmm. The the Snickers bar. The the fucking George is a bad boy. That episode is so underrated. No one talks about George is a bad a boy. Really good I'm a bad boy. Yeah, you are. Yeah, uh, and then Elaine's like, you can't date my friend George. He's bad news. And yeah, because she was like the mom of the of the yes. girl George was trying to date. Yeah. yeah and then uh, and then number five uh, is opposite. But then like I also like love like the fucking marathon runner episode with Kramer. The, this, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I think those are my one. five. Yeah. Uh, really? my, I would say mine are the contest, the soup Nazi. The parking garage. Parking garage doesn't do it for me. Oh, I love the parking garage like one. The... It's really good. Right. Just because, like, I like the episodes where it could have been solved with a text message, you know, or like, or a, or an app. Because it, it, Seinfeld doesn't feel that long ago, but when you see episodes like that, it really is. Um, and weirdly enough, Seinfeld feels more dated than Friends. But I guess Friends was on a little bit longer, so that's why it feels a little more modern. But I just what I love about Seinfeld is you you had all it was so much revolved around sex, but they never talked about sex. That's why I love the contest episode. They didn't say masturbate; they said master of your own domain, which is like the perfect way to say that. And I mean, I love. Don't get me wrong; I love Friends. I'm one of the. I I think you're with me. You're one of the few people that love Friends and Seinfeld. My mom loved Friends too, and every time we go home, Friends, we watch Seinfeld, hours and everybody loves Raymond. Are like in yeah, my fucking... yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I would switch out everybody loves Raymond with King of Queens because I love King of Queens. I, I never. I everybody loves Raymond's cool. It's fine, whatever. But I never really. I don't think because you like the cringe. You hate the cringe. This goes back to cringe. Everybody Maybe it's a Raymond. cringe thing. Everyone loves Raymond. It's so fucking cringe. Is it? Yeah, he's like ma. I got. Ma. Ah, ah, Deborah. Like, like every, like, like every show is like something that, like, basically is not being a problem, not being solved because Ray is still has these parenting issues. Where, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. literally, he's like, uh, I can't tell Deborah that the reason why uh, I, I do my own laundry is not because I do my own laundry is because I have to go next door and make my mom do my laundry for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right, it's like, right, right, it's like yeah. things like that. Because like Deborah would be like, I can do your laundry. He goes, Nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, I, I get. I mean, that's one of the. I loved King of Queens, but King you gotta of- see the. I gotta show you. I, I'm sorry, I just cut you off so badly. I gotta show you the PP episode of Every Real Is Raymond. It will, I'd it'll, be down for that, dude. I, lo- I just love sitcoms. It will change your life. It, it, the, the premise of the episode is his son refuses to go to school because uh, he peed his pants. Everyone called him the the, the pee boy. And, right. <laughs> and Raymond just like that happened to you. And Raymond just had to deal with his son, and it's such a good episode of like it's like the it's probably one of the best examples where like a father and a son. Who's like five years old are in the same thing for the whole episode. It's- One of those kids killed themselves, right? Good. <laughs> uh, so, um, <clears throat> King of Queens. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I think it was one of the twins. Were there were they twins the on the twins, show? Yeah, yeah well, one of them did. So the, they must have had quadru- qu- quadruplets on set. Though. Yeah, because they always have to have a, <laughs> a another double. set. Yeah, uh, for those child labor laws. Um, King of Queens. Yeah, King of Queens. I mean, I just I liked that one when I was I watched it when I was in high school. I was really into it. Um, the funny thing, two things about King of Queens. One is just the honeymooners, you know, and uh, 
Then, but is she? But she's the fucking uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's honeymooners roles reverse. She's the one. One of these days, Kevin, I'm pow right in the fucking kisser. You fucking asshole. All right, I'm gonna fucking tell David Miscavige about you, and he's gonna come over and he's gonna fuck you up. Because Leah Remini was hardcore Scientology when they were filming that show. Remember we were talking about Scientology? Before? You know, of like, course. She was hard, and now she has that show on Netflix, uh, Into Scientology, whatever. Which, like, it's it's pretty good. I watched a lot of it, but she was hardcore Scientology. I always thought she was so hot. Me too. Me too. The older I get, I get less attracted to her. But like, I thought she was like so hot as a kid. Like, I couldn't like control it. She King of Queens was also the first show I ever watched where um, they used the term guy. Like in reference to someone, like, hey, backup guy. I never heard that before. <laughs> like, and obviously now we hear it all the time with Stan Cucci, and we even say it. I Dude. remember when we were watching the first rough cut of the Wise guy. Guy stuff. You were like, guys, I don't know. Like, I feel like Figs is saying guy too much. And I was like, no, 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 it works. It's fine. And then it just had this impact on us. Like, that's now we all say it. Now we all, say, I don't think we ever get through a conversation without saying guy 50 times. But King of Queens was the first time I ever heard it because I was like, well, that's weird. That's a weird thing to call somebody guy. Like, in the way he would do it. Watch out, guy. Watch out, guy. But I now, know a guy named Guy. That's weird. That's a weird one, too. It's, that's got to suck. You just know your parents didn't give a shit about you from day one. Well, I don't know. He's Guy. It was a family name. Was, is it short for Guilfoyle, maybe? Gilf- Guilfoyle. I don't know. Yeah, because that's a name, too. But I that's even so. worse. I'd rather go by Guy instead really of Guilfoyle. By- that's like calling your, your kid person, you know? Guy. That's so messed up. There's a lot of shitty names you could give a kid. Guy is the worst one. The only thing worse than having a uh, than than being bad is being unremarkable. Because at least when you're bad, you're you're remarkable in the sense that you did a bad job and people remember you for that. But if you're just a mediocre mediocre unremarkable, just nothing. You know what? I can't even think about any of those guys because they don't even come to my brain because they're unremarkable. There's no, they're unremarkable. God, I would rather be hated than unremarkable to be honest with you i don't think i could would be able to live with myself well you're very hated so I'll, 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 that works too yeah so so you got your, your dream came true i didn't i that's why i don't read tiktok comments man oh i read the tiktok comments just, just days i'm mad at you i'm like you oh, read I'm my at, tiktok comments yeah, I, i'm like fuck troy bond you know what would be he, a fun thing to do he Can left you, me on red do you want to read tiktok comments oh my god right I'd now love to. Yeah. Do, you want, do you have your phone i don't have my phone right, hold on wait, i'm gonna go get my get phone. your phone <laughs> Uh, I'll 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 hold I'll hold the pod while you're gone. So uh, while Troy's gone, I'm gonna tell the story that what happened at the fucking award thing. This is what happened. They give Tarantino an award. Tarantino's not there, so they get Michael Madsen to go up there. Michael Madsen. I don't know if he has Parkinson's. I don't know if he was hammered, but he was shaking. He was doing the Michael J. Fox. He was freaking the fuck out. And he gets on stage and he's like, I don't even know why I'm here. But the thing is, Quentin Tarantino changed my life. He put me in his movies. And then he went on to do this like really long, annoying, but kind of sentimentally sweet, like homage speech? to Tarantino. Yeah. He was like, thank you all. I felt you making me feel like somebody tonight. <laughs> Maybe there's another chance for me after all. I remember him saying that. Yeah, this I love this. He was like, "This festival in my resume, in my bio, put all the roles that IMBD refuses to put me in, even though I was in them." <laughs> <laughs> but you guys know, <laughs> IMDb was no help for all, especially Jerry from customer service. <laughs> Especially Jerry. Jerry, if you're in this house tonight, I just want you to know I'm going to take your mother to your sister's you know, house and burn it down. He, he, they, I didn't think he, they gave him the music. Didn't they give him the music? They did give him the music. They gave, that was the sad part they about They gave that. Michael Madsen the music. They gave him the music. They gave him the, the fuck off stage. So anyways, it was my, it was the most memorable part of the award ceremony, I would say, right? Yeah. Well, my, I, the other memorable part was, was Ice-T. Ice-T when Because like, it was so loud. Nobody was really paying attention. You had easily 2,000 Italians in Atlantic City who were hammered after meeting all their favorite mob stars all day. There was food. There was drinks. There was a lot going on. There was a band. Nobody's paying attention. There was a lot of talking. And Ice-T comes on after Michael Madsen's thing, and he was like, yeah, my favorite line from that movie was when he was like, I'm going to torture you regardless, motherfucker. Y'all remember that? Just me? Anyway, like, ta- like over like... 2,000 people talking so loudly over him. Just, I rem- that's like the only time I've seen like a celebrity bomb. But like, I know how he felt because how many times have you been hosting Anyways. any wave? Like, I, I was just, it felt like I was watching someone do a check spot. So I know how he felt. 
But those were both great mob movie con stories. That years so, especially. So and then, I think, yeah, I think it. So this is the story. This is after Michael Madsen gives his I'm speech. I'm fucking... I'm on one. Troy, Troy, I don't know if you're... You're not on one. You're typically on one, and I'm typically not on one. But that right. night, I was on. You right. were off. I was off. I, I was drinking beers. I was playing... I won a bunch of blackjack. Yeah. I, was, I was calling Stan Coochie guy. I was like, shut up, guy. Go fuck yourself, guy. I was I was, I was, was feeling myself. I, I, I was I was dancing on the dance floor with Kevy Kev. I, I'm Kevy having Kev. the time of my life. My boy. And that is when... I bump into Michael Madsen. Well, I would say Michael Madsen bumped into me. Michael Madsen, he has a posse with him. He has some girl with big old fake titties that they look like she just had the surgery, what, two days ago? Like, they, they, they look she fresh. She's still bleeding. She's still bleeding. You can still see the, the cut wound. Uh, he has this big fake titty girl. He has uh, two security guards and a bunch of, like, Joe, Tom, and Dick and Harry's hanging around him, okay? Right. So he's this whole posse with him. And he bumps into me. And you know me. When someone bumps into me, I'm like, I, I give him the whole, like, hey, what are you doing, you know? And then I realize it's Michael Madsen. And without even, like, flinching a beat, I go, it's so nice to meet you. Michael, I loved your speech. It was the best speech at Mob Movie Con. You just said that like Christopher Walken. It's so nice to meet you, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael. So nice to hear your speech at Mob Movie Con. Mob Movie Con. <laughs> I really enjoyed you. And it's <laughs> what talks. First time I saw Reservoir Dogs, I had the DVD <laughs> up my ass for five years. <laughs> it smelled absolutely terrible. When it came out, it went from Blu-ray to Pink Eye. I'd be damned. I'd be damned. I'd be damned. Also, Michael I Madsen... had nothing to do with the murder of Natalie Wood. <laughs> don't, don't bring up that. <laughs> <laughs> my Christopher Walken turned into Bernie Sanders there at the end. It happens every so, time. So he bumps into me and I go, Michael... I loved your speech at Ma Movie Con, the award, the whole thing. And Michael just, I don't know what gets into him. Remember, he's all Parkinson out. He's like, dude, uh, he's freaking out. He's, he's twitching and shit. I think those are just alcoholic shakes. Alcohol. I don't want to label him. I honestly <laughs> might even just cut that from saying it. But it's a stress day. He's, well, I'm, he's, I'm labeling he's him. Shaking I'm him la off. He's jiggling. Yeah. So, jiggly Michael Manson <laughs> grabs my hand, gets close to me. He's literally like on top of me. And it was like, you really like that speech? You like that speech? I was like, yeah. He goes, that means so much to me. He's like, he's like hugging me. But the thing is, I am not trying to hug him back. I'm not trying to be close to him because he's two security guards, not one, two. And these two security guards. And they were getting involved, right? They stepped in front of me and went to grab me. Like, you can't get close to him. And then as he was like talking, he didn't even, he, he stopped and said, he goes, hey, you can't get close. Cause, and then he looked at Michael Manson and was like, oh, Michael Manson's grabbing him. I'll back off. And I'm like, don't back off. Get him off of me. I have Michael Madsen breathing down my neck. And he literally, he whispers in my ear for like 30 more seconds. Being like, that really means a lot to me. I, 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 I'm, the fact that you see my work. I didn't say anything about seeing his work. I just thought I liked the speech. And he's like, the fact that you see my work. Because <laughs> if that, he you know, asked, I would have told him. I think that, his work's shit. That you're aware of me. And, and, and he's really like tearing up on me. We have a moment. Yeah, and then he was like, I'm staying in room 217. <laughs> we had a moment. I, I wish I had the moment with the fake titty girl, but that's a whole different story. So then the next the next day, we get to Mob Movie Con early. It's like 9 a.m., 8 a.m. It's early in the morning. It's and we, 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 we get there so early that we're seeing the cel celebrities walk in without like that big posse, without the line. And so Michael Madsen's very approachable. He doesn't even have his security guards near him. And he's near me. I'm near him. And I just very nicely, like a gentleman... Hey, Michael, uh, it was really great meeting yesterday. He looked at me as he didn't know who I was and just beelined out of the way. He looked through you. He looked through me. Yeah, that walked was... Walked right past me. And I'm like, this is a man I just had an intimate moment with 10 hours ago. What's happening? That was night guy. This is day guy. I hope that story was good for the podcast. I don't know. That was honestly... Per I'm watching you tell the story, and I'm like... Perfect podcast story. Can we can we clip, can we clip that? I We're don't gonna. Know. Oh, so much of this podcast is clippable. Wait, I wanted you to read some of these TikTok comments. commentos. So this is you reading my TikTok comments. Uh, I try to. F I mean, you p pick your choice. You can go whichever yeah, you want. Wh which one? Which one has a lot of hate? I was. Uh, there's one that video I sent. Uh, honestly, they they. I don't even read them anymore. But there's equal amount of hate and love. Um, I'd say the ones with the most views probably have a lot of hate. This like, one has 35. 35 comments? Yeah. What's, what video is it? Uh, I don't know. Are there any bad ones? <laughs> this is really good for my mental health. People love you. 
Oh, that's even that's even. I'm not sure which is worse for me sometimes to tell you the truth. I don't know what's worse for my ego, the good comments or the bad comments. Wait, this one was all good. Let me let me okay. let me get one. Wait, you wait. know, a lot of the Trump Biden ones have crazy comments underneath it cuz I posted the Trump video and then everybody all the Trumpies were jumping down my throat because they thought I was a Trumpy too because I posted all these videos against Democrats and then I posted a video against Biden and the Trumpies jumped down my throat again and I was getting crazy. I voted for Joe Biden. Should I click that one? Yeah, that probably has some crazy comments underneath Here it. Here we go. Oh, my God. Eight, <laughs> the first one I had, had 35 comments. This one has 8,000 comments. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, see, this is the one where I'm saying, like, I did the Trump one, and then the Trumpies jumped down my throat. I did this one, and the Trumpies and the Democrats jumped down my throat. Some of them are... I, I Wait, them. I haven't found any comments yet, but this comment section... It's gonna be a war zone. A lot of them is just people fighting each other. That's the crazy thing. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just home basing it. That's the thing I feel bad about. They're not shitting on you. They're shitting with each other. This is common on common warfare. Common on common. I hate common on common crime. It's just common on common. The comments have to fight the likers. The likers, the fight likers the have to fight the comments. Where are all the sharers? Where are... <laughs> Dude, this is actually hard. I, I like, need some share support. <laughs> I think I need to like, like, like plan this out. Like, with like have them pre because like this is a lot. Uh, eight thousand comments. How am I supposed to read through eight thousand comments? That's George? the thing. I guess I when I see a number like that, I'm not thinking they're all eight thousand good comments. <laughs> no, a lot of them are just like I'll just read you. One. I'll just read the comments. Show you that it's just the like mixed politics bag. ones. I bet you are ones are just the comments are going to be mostly. No people. one wanted Bernie. Bro didn't even make the primaries. Notice that despite all of Joe's flaws, he's still better than Trump by a long shot. We could have we could have Bernie, bro. Could have had Bernie. They should just bro. Open you right about that smile. He'd be like, I ain't pretty, but I ain't Trump either. Like this is I hate these comments. These comments suck. That's just like people just just blowing nothing into the air. Videos that are I mean, there's probably. Well, you know what? <laughs> I guess I shouldn't go looking for negative comments. That's the moral of this podcast today. Dude, everyone loves you. I've, I've only seen good comments. Well, that's good. That's good. I guess it's just the rare bad ones that get in my head that make me not want to read them anymore. But also, like I said, I shouldn't even read the good ones either. I should just do things, Batman. Well, the worst that I found is you have fourth grade. You have a fourth grade sense of humor. That's like the worst thing I found. That's very fair, though. I can't argue with that. I do have a fourth this grade a sense bust. of humor. You know, we we need an intern to fucking. <laughs> To fucking like like Apple find uh, uh, um, bad things and then let's do this again. Um, well, do you have anything you want to plug before we wrap this bad boy up? Uh, this is know. a pretty good pod. You want me to plug stuff? Uh, uh, you do a lot, so I feel like you... uh, I have my dumb podcast called Trailer Trashing. We watch and make fun of movie trailers. We got to get you on. I I had an idea for a trailer trashing episode, and now I can't remember what we, my we, episode we gotta get is going to be. We're going to get you on. Yeah, let's uh, do it. I have a story. You know, we should do Batman movies because the Batman's coming yes. out. Yes. I have a storytelling show all around Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Jersey City called Bad Trip Storytelling Show. We tell bad stories and uh, it's fun. What's the tag for that? At Bad Trip? At Bad Trip Storytelling Show. On, a, on what? Instagram? Instagram for now. Maybe more stuff later. And, and what's uh, the handle for uh, the, the, uh, the, the trailer, trash trailer trashing at trailer trashing pod? Joey, 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 Joey Rinaldi, never Joseph. Always great chatting with my brother. Check us out on Canoli Fans. You can see our Judge Jerry Springer clip, uh, some other MobCon footage. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow the podcast. It's really good for my ego. Every single person that subscribes to the podcast, it's like a hug my father never gave me. Check out more episodes, and uh, we're dropping with new ones every Wednesday. This outro was way longer than it had to be.